the one of the critical things that any stop motion animator needs is an ability to focus for long periods of time. Uh, people tend to think that stop motion animators have patience and then that's what it takes to make a, a film like this. And it really is about focus because you have to concentrate for hours and hours on end on getting just the right sort of movements on dozens of different body parts. And so having the ability to, to really focus and concentrate for long periods of time, that's kind of the core talent that an animator needs. The Dark Knight Rises, um, we have a different tone of uh, stop motion movies and animation movies right now. Even Pixar's Brave is getting darker. Mm -hmm. We have Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio getting a dark version. Mm -hmm. So and Paranorman and Coraline are both children adaptations of, of books. Um, is there a need for different stories for children? I think so. I mean, one of the things that as a fan of animation uh, that, that I find frustrating is that the, in the last you know, 10, 15 years, a lot of animated films have tend to look and feel the same. And, and animation is, is such a powerful visual medium that we can tell so many interesting and beautiful stories in so many different ways. It's frustrating to see filmmakers not take advantage of that. And I think one of the things that, that, that we're trying to do at Leica that's, that's different is that we're trying to tell different kinds of stories in different ways using the, the medium of animation. So we saw that with Coraline, which is a dark fairy tale, which is it's it kind of in the tradition, in the great tradition of the, the Disney classics like, like Snow White and Pinocchio. And then with Paranorman, we're telling a different kind of a story, uh, a story that's more a kind of a coming of age story but we're, we're smashing that into this kind of supernatural comedic thriller. So it's, this, it's kind of the strange hybrid of things, but it also has elements of darkness and intensity. And I think within the confines of a cinema where you can take your family and your children to enjoy entertainment like this, uh, you're able to see kind of the wide range of, of, of emotion in a, in, a, in a safe environment. So you can have the dark elements, you can have the light elements, you can have the intensity, and, and it, but it's balanced with heart and humor. And so by being able to go through on that long ride where you have all that, that range, that gamut of emotions, I think you'll be enriched for the experience. Do you think that stop motion uh, film is the perfect vehicle for these darker stories, for these fantastic movies? Stop motion. Stop motion is unique uh, in animation in, in that it, it really is a performance art. You kind of you start one place and you end at another. Um, I think that stop motion films have tended to feel a little bit creepy, and I think mostly that has to do with the way things move. Is that they tend to be a little bit jerky, um, and by but by bringing subtlety and refinement to the actual animation, you break down that barrier be, barrier between kind of creepiness and something that you can connect to. And I think with the advances of technology that we've made on this film, with the facial animation and everything else and the animation style, it, I think people can have an emotional connection with these characters. They're not going to see it as a, as a puppet, as a bit of steel and silicon, but they will see it as a kind of a real living thing, and, and they can see part of themselves in these characters. Uh, so I think historically, yes, stop motion has to tended to lend itself to kind of creepy things, and I think that's just because of the way it's done. But by being able to use stop motion in a, in a more expressive way, I think we can tell different kinds of stories in the media. We have this contrast between CGI movies and stop motion movies. Some people thought on the first trailer, oh, look, it's a great CGI look, because it looks so perfect. The lightning is so intense, and the, the puppets move very smooth. Um, so, is there a roadmap for new milestones in uh, stop motion animation for Leica? Well, with each, each successive film, we try to improve upon the technology. We try to grow as artists. And so, you know, where we, where we went from Coraline to this film, we try to, uh, to, 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 uh, to bring a more sophisticated animation style to this film. Coraline was a little bit more theatrical. This film was a little bit more naturalistic. We went with uh, something that was for for the for the vision of it. We went with kind of more sweeping visuals, more a more cinematic look to the camera angles, to the lighting, and that played into into the performances as well. We really wanted performances that were more true to life, so that required greater subtlety, greater refinement, more smoothness in the animation. And by incorporating technology like we are with the, the rapid prototyping and with the CG elements and some of the visual effects, I think we are getting this really interesting hybrid, this very kind of strange fusion of, of a craft and technology and I think it gives people something that they haven't really experienced before. I really like the stereoscopic concept of uh, Coraline between the two worlds that the real world is flatter and mm -hmm. uh, the fantastic world is enriched even in, in depth. Can you tell us a little about the stereoscopic concept and paranormal? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the thing about using stereo in stop motion is that you're actually filming real object, objects that exist and so 
you're you're automatically getting something that you wouldn't get maybe in a, in a in a CG film where all none, none of that st stuff is actually something that exists. Uh, you're photographing something as exists on set. Um, but in terms of uh, uh, of the way we're using 3D in the film and stere stereographic photography, um, we 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 definitely wanted to make it a, a part of of kind of an immersing storytelling tool. We wanted to you know it's just like anything else. You bring in lighting and and, and sound and, and lens choice. 3D is just yet another thing with that. And one of the things that we wanted to do was uh, is, is differentiate between the natural world, the real world, and what Norman sees. So anytime we kind of go through his eyes and we see kind of his world, we, we see the ghosts that he talks to, the more supernatural elements, that's when we really exaggerate kind of the depth and, and, and the kind of the, the, the freedom and, and, and the things that we're seeing. It's not kind of hemmed in by kind of the real world. And anytime we're referencing kind of schlocky, you know, B-grade horror films from the from the 60s or 70s, that's when we kind of exaggerate those things and do Dutch angles and funky things like that to really highlight the difference between what's real and what's more fantastic. Last question: uh, The next projects are the Goblins and the Wildwood. Is there any story you like to produce or realize at Leica? We basically want to tell really interesting stories. We want to tell bold, distinctive, and enduring stories, things that are classic, things that will stand the test of time, things that have something meaningful to say, and things that aren't typically being told in this medium. Animation is such an interesting and powerful medium that we can tell really strong stories that will live with people and affect their lives. And so we want to tell kinds of stories that will resonate with people. And so we find things like Coraline, like Paranorman, and we're always looking for stories that are being underserved in, in the medium. And, and I think we, you know, we, we found things that, that, that I think will really connect with people.